Thank you very much. Greetings, Douglas County. My name is Kelly Robinson, and welcome to the September 14th, 2021 Transportation Committee. We've got a pretty full agenda, so we're going to get right into it. We're going to start the meeting as we always do with taking roll call. My name is Kelly Robinson, and I'm chair of this committee. I'll yield now to Madam Chair. Mona Jackson Jones, the Vice Chairman of the Transportation Committee. I'm Miguel Valentin, the Transportation and Engineering Director. Okay. Is that it? That's all the voting members. Voting members. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Fred, you're just you're here for it. Is Fred in the meeting or yeah. he Yes, sir. I'm I'm in the meeting, Vice Chair. Okay, so we'll just acknowledge you. We also have a guest, uh, Frederick Perry, Deputy um, Administrator for Douglas County. We do have a quorum, three um, three votes, so we're going to go ahead and move with the meeting. Miguel, we've got first order of business, which is our meeting minutes from our last meeting. That is correct, uh, Chairman uh, of the committee. The uh, uh, minutes of the August 17th, 2021 meeting were distributed uh, into these uh, boxes. Uh, hopefully, everybody's had an opportunity to review them, and if... Uh, everybody's okay with them. If there are no edits or revisions needed, uh, they would be ready for adoption. Okay. Madam Chair, are you okay with move forward with the motion? Yes, please move forward with the motion. All right. Miguel, give me a motion. Yes, uh, make a motion that uh, the committee approve uh, or adopt the minutes of the meeting of August 17th, 2021. All right, so we've had a motion. Can I get a second? Second. All right, we got a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, we'll go around the room to adopt the meeting minutes. Kelly Robinson, yes. Donna Jackson Jones, yes. Joe Valentin, yes. All right, that's three zero. All right. Who was the female that spoke? That was uh, Madam Chair, I believe. Oh, I thought it was Madam Administrator. Okay, Madam Chair, my bad. <laughs> All right, that's, that's 3 0. Um, yeah. Motion passes. All right, Miguel, let's just keep this going because we've got a pretty full agenda. Okay, th thank you very much. Uh, next item on the agenda is related to uh, transit services. There's a couple of things. Uh, one is an update on, on Title VI uh, outreach uh, that uh, I'd like for the collaborative firm to give us a brief update. And uh, then there's uh, another item related to COVID. Uh, expenditures. Uh, whatever your pleasure, uh, Chairman of the Committee, uh, either one could go first. Well, since we've got a guest, let her go first. Let the collaborative go first. Okay, very good. Uh, Danielle Sherry Hoover with the collaborative firm, if you would uh, provide us an update. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Director Valentin. Madam Chair, Commissioners, I'm County Administrator and residents and whomever may be listening. I am going to share my screen for a brief update. Bear with me one moment as I pull this up. No, I'm saying they had our baby shower. Oh, there's another baby shower? Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to sign it real quick before they started. Oh, no, they told me you guys turn off your phone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and get started. Okay, can all see the screen and hear me all right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So I'll just briefly go through a quick update of public outreach and communication since the last time um, we presented. Uh, so prior to uh, this meeting, um, we last presented, I believe, um, May, June. Uh, so what I will briefly go over some August, September highlights today. Uh, for the public and all who may be listening and tuning in, there is still a CDC mask uh, mandate or mask order um, for all transit um, and uh, conveyances. So there is still the mask for the mask. Those who uh, would like a mask while riding uh, Connect Douglas fixed route bus services can just simply ask uh, the one of the uh, drivers um, uh, while boarding the bus if they do not have one. There are stations uh, in the multimodal transportation sanitation stations in the multimodal transportation center. 
and still maintaining daily cleanings of the buses, the transportation center, and weekly deep sanitation. So ongoing um, or completed activities for print media. We utilize Chapel Hill News and Views and Hometown Advantage. Those are the, the local larger print publications in the area. Uh, so just to be transparent with Chapel Hill News and Views and Hometown Advantage, uh, there was a pause for um, from June to August to reevaluate um, intentional messaging and budget. So we are starting up with Chapel Hill News and Views. Uh, actually, the print deadline is this week for the October uh, issue. So uh, keep a heads up for that um, in your mailboxes and uh, they're in various county uh, facilities as well. So at your pleasure for the group, many of you may have seen um, what we've done completed uh, during the uh, Board of Commissioners retreat. We made a, a brief presentation as that, uh, there as well. There are a couple of other opportunities, uh, a couple of other events that were completed since then. So I'll briefly go through them as you see. Uh, the goal uh, for uh, outreach activities is one to two scheduled activities per quarter. Now, mind you, uh, within uh, that it was the goal for uh, the pandemic, meaning we can do virtual and at uh, as long as we are following CDC guidelines, et cetera, and then we, were, we would need to be flexible. So we've done a lot of virtual events. Uh, the first in-person event was in uh, May for the Taste of Douglasville. After that, we did a Douglas County um, career fair with the school system. That partnership has strengthened as I jump ahead most recently with the Douglas County uh, school system, the YBL, YAP, bear with me, I have to remember the acronym, is the Work-Based Learning and Youth Apprenticeship. So that uh, is a group within the Douglas County school system of students who won't be entering into higher education, meaning either associate's degree um, or uh, college or even technical schools. They're entering the workforce. So I thought it um, highly beneficial to strengthen uh, the relationship we have with them and it seems to be fruitful um, already. So we had a career fair with um, the school system back in May for this group and just most recently uh, last week uh, we did a presentation for the coordinators and the coordinators are within each school and there was a career fair at Lithia Springs High School which is a memory serves route 40 um, on uh, the fixed bus route. So not only do the students hear about it, but the coordinators. So that way there's always information on hand and to talk to students and residents who are entering the workforce who um, won't have to say no to a job um, that uh, just for the mere fact that they can't get to work. We are trying to bridge that gap with that partnership. Here are a couple of photos from some of the recent events to include the ribbon cutting, Taste of Douglasville, uh, and yeah, ribbon, a couple of ribbon cutting in taste of Douglas Bill events most recently. So to quickly jump ahead, currently what's uh, scheduled are September Saturdays. Um, Connect Douglas will have a presence um, uh, as a pop-up booth um, similar to, oh, 2019 if memory serves. <laughs> Uh, it's been a long, uh, long haul with this pandemic. So 2019, we were on site at the September Saturdays, um, very similar. We'll do that again this year, both dates, the 18th and the 25th. And uh, with uh, September Saturdays, uh, there will be a uh, three fixed route buses uh, in rotation. One will be fixed at the, at the actual courthouse as a cooling station and uh, added visibility near the Connect Douglas uh, pop-up booth or info booth. Uh, and then there will be two other shuttle buses going from the multimodal transportation center um, and having a route of pickup and drop off um, as coordinated with transitions to third party vendor and of course Connect Douglas staff. Uh, so that's for September. And then uh, already scheduled is the fall festival uh, at the Douglas County 
um, public safety complex, and that is in October. So anything in addition to that uh, will be added to uh, the, the calendar, and we've already exceeded our goal of one and two activities or outreach activities per quarter. So we're already at seven, not to include September Saturdays in the fall festival. So what I do want to um, pivot and, and talk about uh, what Director Valentin just mentioned, those is the Title uh, Six outreach. So uh, as I listened in to yesterday's work session, I know it was mentioned on the agenda. So I do want to piggyback off of uh, the policy that Director Valentin mentioned during that meeting. Um, the Title uh, Six program policy is based off of the Civil Rights Rest uh, Restoration Act of 1987 and even um, further than the 1964 Act. So uh, just to paraphrase, um, uh, having an opportunity for folk, for people, residents, et cetera, to not only um, voice comments or concerns or even have an opportunity to forward a complaint, um, having that at within the Connect Douglas uh, transit systems. So on September the 1st, there was an opportunity for the public um, to have basically an open forum to do just that from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Multimodal Transportation Center. Uh, the public was also um, informed of uh, the opportunity to accept comments um, or provide questions um, through emails or letters up until September 13. Uh, and as you see here, here are some of the title six outreach uh, efforts as it relates to uh, uh, Title VI and prior to uh, this evening's public uh, hearing. So flyers were posted in all the fixed bus routes, 10, 20, 30, 40. Um, press release forwarded to media contacts um, and of course uh, the county uh, communications department an e-blast to over 200 plus county residents, um, businesses, uh, business owners, excuse me, churches, um, uh, CBOs, um, including minority business owners and uh, targeted demographics. Uh, there was a print ad in the Douglas County Sentinel, social media posts and cross promotion via direct messages um, within social media. So direct messages and Facebook and Instagram. Uh, there's also connectdouglas.com, so it was on, on the website, and thank you to the communications team. It was on, also on the Celebrate Douglas's homepage as well. And anything, any alert posted on the connectdouglas.com Doug, connect page, excuse me, also uh, alerts those who are a part of the news feed. Um, that's another one of the benefits of the website. Um, being developed at the same time with the county. You know, Celebrate Douglas, if you can recall, uh, was upgraded at the same time with Connect Douglas. So when alert goes out, those who are registered can get that email. So that I think is a, a benefit as well um, when we upgraded the websites. And here are some, um, some screenshots, some examples. So the public notice in the middle to the right, it was also posted um, not only uh, in the Sentinel, as but as the, uh, the Douglas County Sentinel Facebook page. So they actually posted it on their uh, Facebook page. And to the left, uh, sorry, it's a little pixelated. Uh, that is what we call the, the DM or direct message. So reaching out to uh, CBOs such as West uh, Metro NAACP is the one on the left. And they basically blasted it out and emailed their um, Instagram followers. Quickly, just going through 2021-2022 uh, forecast. And again, this is just for those who are tuning in. Uh, this was also presented at, at the uh, Board of Commissioners retreat. So I'll just briefly go through this as we are moving through and still being flexible with COVID-19 protocols, we also have to be flexible of how we are engaging in the community. So we're trying to pre-plan. So not only does Connect Douglas um, messaging reach the county in which it serves, but it also extends out to Metro Atlanta. 
those coming into connect, or excuse me, those coming into Douglas County, um, for, whether for work or pleasure, and those who are leaving the county, whether for work or pleasure. There are three areas of connectivity that we will be targeting in on for a 2022 approach. Um, traditional media, which we currently have, such as, you know, uh, radio, web, and print, news releases, media alerts, postcards, mailers, et cetera, as you see in the top uh, circle uh, above, to the left, engagement, um, wanting to uh, do more stakeholder interviews um, once uh, we're able to eat, uh, do more in-person or virtual um, interviews, getting a pulse of how things are going because Connect Douglas is uh, within year two and the majority of that time was during the pandemic, unfortunately, as far as the first um, inaugural year to date. Other engagements, um, uh, business stakeholders um, in particular uh, to strengthen the, uh, the relationships with that Route 30 corridor um, and the, the students, for example, um, other associates when the, within the area having viable transportation uh, to and from um, employment. Uh, travel training classes, et cetera, so I won't go through everything on the engagement side. Uh, digital, briefly, continuous social media campaigns, strengthening that even more. Um, with budgets, uh, targeted budgets, um, even text message marketing. That's something that we have yet to do. Um, additional email campaigns, um, strengthening that as well. And in the event, uh, we do still need to use a, a digital age depending upon shift of uh, the pandemic. Um, I'm praying for things to cease. However, we need to be flexible, updating our how-to videos, doing virtual events, and even doing virtual travel training classes if we need to. And here, not to go through all of that, is just uh, 2022 marketing and outreach schedules from Q1 to Q4. And obviously, this is a fluid list based upon um, budget approvals and honestly how uh, public health concerns are addressed or, or shifted between now and in the end of the year. So at, at that point, I want to say thank you again for your time. I sped through a lot of that, and um, but I am open for any questions or comments, please. Very well done. Very well done. Um, to the committee, any questions, comments, Madam Chair? We'll start with you. Uh, certainly. Thank you so much, uh, Danielle uh, Hoover, for such a great presentation. Um, the ridership, I know with the uh, pandemic in, in play, it looked like the, the photograph that you displayed showed some uh, citizens boarding the bus. Have we, is, is the uh, ridership um, serving since we're in the 19th month, have you noticed it ticking up somewhat or it's still still um, pretty flat line? What do we have? Well, Madam Chair, one thing, um, thank you for your question. Uh, one thing I can say, I can't speak for uh, Connect Douglas operations. Um, I definitely, uh, can only give my personal opinion because I don't have those concrete numbers for ridership. Um, the uh, ridership is done not only by transit um, transitions, but at the time, the, the director and manager. What I can tell you is just my personal experience of um, doing the outreach. Um, people are still a little hesitant. However, if you recall that Passio Go in um, social media numbers I presented um, or we presented during the Board of Commissioners, people who use it, use it. Mm -hmm. um, for example, 52% um, of, of folks who ride downloaded the app. So if you uh, do so much as to go into your uh, Google uh, or Google Play or Apple uh, um, iPhone or Apple Play Store and actually download an app, you're using it. Um, we actually even got uh, a testimonial from a writer um, during September 1st that I will um, add on social media to the website of um, a wonderful resident uh, who uses it frequently and, and, and um, gave his, his testimony. And um, he allowed me to say that he, he even mentioned in the testimony that he is autistic. Um, however, this man is, this young man is bright and intelligent and uh, use, uses Passio Go, and he still travels daily. Um, so I can only give my experience, um, um, but I can't give concrete numbers, and that's something that I would have to get back to you with. 
Well, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing the testimony. Certainly, it just proves a point that we do have citizens that really need the access, regardless if there's a pandemic or not. And that's the point I was taking. You know, one of yes, ma'am. Very clear. All right. Yes, ma'am. And I question. just want. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry to um, overspeak you. There's a slight delay on my end, but I just wanted to let the citizens and those who are, are out there, it's public transportation, it's there. We're, we're especially the fixed bus route, it's um, operational for those who still need it. It's still safe. It's yes. um, uh, and masks are available and free Wi Fi. So I wanted to just stress, stress that. And if those who are needed, um, the fixed bus route system is still available. Okay. Thank you. I yield back to you, uh, Chairman of the committee. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you, Dan. Miguel, can you answer the question, Madam Chair, here regarding ridership? I, I can't. Uh, I don't have uh, definitive numbers. However, uh, the last trending was somewhere in the neighborhood between 40 and 50 percent uh, of the ridership that we were experiencing prior to COVID. So, uh, it went uh, at one point as low as 30%, has gone up from there, but it hovers a little under 50% uh, as of the last uh, uh, information point that I have. Okay. Can you provide that to the committee members when you get a chance, please? Sure. Thank you. All right, if nothing else on this agenda item, let's go to the next one, Miguel. Yes, the, the next one is, um, also related to transit, uh, but it is more a discussion item before uh, any action is, is needed. We received uh, a request from the third party operator uh, of the bus route, fixed bus route system, uh, Transition Commute Solutions, um, indicating that uh, the uh, additional testing or a submittal of proof of vaccination that is uh, required now by the county in connection with um, new hired uh, employees uh, for the county proper. And, and the fact that uh, th those employees are trained by the county, uh, the employees that um, Commute Solutions uses are trained, uh, are briefed by the county as well. So they're required to have the same level of um, uh, proof that they are either vaccinated or uh, receive a negative test. Uh, the, the third party operator has indicated uh, that perhaps, uh, and, and it's an item for discussion, perhaps uh, they, they believe there should be an amendment to the contract to stipulate that that is a requirement. Um, this is a, a, a task that I will defer to Tiffany uh, uh, to explore that uh, after she gets briefed and has an opportunity to read through the contract. But uh, in terms of cost, it doesn't necessarily add um, any additional cost other than the amount of time that the new employees are paid because they would have to be paid for the time that it takes prior to being engaged by the firm uh, to be tested or provide that, that information. So uh, something to explore. Uh, it may result eventually in perhaps a, a, an amendment to the contract. I do not anticipate that it would have a significant impact. Uh, however, I uh, wanted to bring it to the attention of the committee that that is a potential uh, outcome and, and uh, for Tiffany to uh, take a look and, and uh, see what, um, what steps would need to be taken going forward. So it's a federal um, executive order, right? And they're asking for us to pick up the costs for employees going to get tested. They, they're not, I, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Sure. I can jump in, Vice Chair, or Chair. Um, it's not an executive order um, for county employees. We have, sorry, did you say something? No, go ahead. Yeah, what I said, what, we've dis what we're doing um, for county new hires is we require them to have 
negative um, test or um, show our insurance carrier that they are vaccinated. Um, you may recall we had two consecutive orientations where everybody in the orientation class was exposed. And so I guess, Miguel, so th this one is a new one on me. I, I guess the contractor has been told they have to do the same thing. So the, for their drivers, even though they are contract drivers, the training that is provided to certify them to be able to operate the system is done by the county. So there is a training session that is provided by the county um, in order for them to be able to be active in the system. And it is under in that context that they are essentially indicating that, that it may take additional time for those employees to um, you know, be able to provide that information to be tested. And they would, not that there's any cost associated with the test proper, but that there might be a time, uh, uh, you know, then you have to allow time for them to go uh, get that test. And they would have to pay them uh, for that time. Hmm. And th this might be a situation where, um, you know, they're, they're asking, they, they want to sort of formalize that. I'm not certain that it needs to be formalized uh, to that level. I'll defer to Tiffany on, on this, but essentially if, if they were to submit an invoice as, as, they, as they do for the time of those individuals um, that if they started uh, working properly, say on a Monday uh, at, uh, at noon and uh, the first um, two, three hours were to go get a test, uh, I think that we could just pay them for that time and not necessarily have a contract amendment, but, but they're asking that for us to take a look at that. And that's why I'm bringing it to, uh, to the committee. Yeah. You want me to take a look at that? I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, go right ahead, I'm sorry. I wasn't saying anything, thank you. Oh, okay. Okay, well, I, I just wanted to uh, to to make mention to uh, Miguel. Miguel, if we could take this uh, offline, I could want to sit down and kind of uh, work through this a little bit more. This is the first time I'm hearing about this. I'd like to discuss it further with you, and I assume that uh, Matt Laverne is uh, is is uh, have an active role in this as well. I would assume he 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 would. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is, is there a time frame for this? Do we need to have this done uh, within a certain time frame? No, there is no, no time frame other than, than uh, you know, when the invoicing comes in, we, we would be able to uh, deal with it at that time. So any new hires that would fall under this new mandate, we would have to have a response, whether it be a formal amendment to the contract or some other uh, response to how we would deal with the time that they would invoice for. Okay, I, I'd like to take this offline if I could. We actually have a, uh, a team meeting on Thursday, but I'll get with Matt prior to that uh, to get a briefing on this and, uh, you know, get a better understanding of what's, what's needed, what's required. Uh, you know, we may have to, uh, to have a workaround for this. Okay. All right, so noted, no action taken. All right. Okay. You, know, you okay with that? Yes, I'm fine with that. All right. So Fred, you're gonna take that up for us and get back to us on report out? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. All right, Miguel, number right. four, five, yeah. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is the just an update on the Lee Road widening uh, testing RFQ. We've received seven responses uh, as part of phase one. We will narrow that down to three and um, rank them. Once we go through the process, we'll be ready to uh, present the, the uh, ranking to the Board of Commissioners, along with the recommendation that uh, uh, the committee has indicated prior that, that we would uh, go 
to the uh, to the commission for uh, a contract or a standby contract for testing on the projects and this would be applicable to Lee Road probably Lee Road would be the first one leading in uh, but the but the uh, on call contract would also be applicable to other projects as needed uh, the contract itself would have no dollar value no no dollars attached to it uh, but then once uh, uh, task orders are required, then those would be quantified and uh, uh, taken to the board for approval. Okay. But you're not saying this on-demand consultant that we award this will get all the contracts regarding CNI for all projects, are you? No, uh, because we, we typically retain three different vendors. Uh, that qualify for any particular functional area. And so we would have three of them to, similar to the on call for design consultants, uh, we would rotate through the list uh, depending on our on our needs. Gotcha. Okay. We know to keep going. Next. Right. Thank you very much. The, the next uh, update is the Thornton Road and Riverside Parkway intersection. We've talked about this one a few times. And um, there was uh, some discussion at the, I believe it was the last meeting or the one prior about retaining a consultant um, to begin the design process. We have received a proposal from uh, the on-call consultant who is next in line on the list, and, and that is Atkins. And uh, the, the amount of uh, their design fee is 200 $88,866.85. Now this is very similar. Uh, you might recall when we did Riverside uh, on the other side, when, where we began the process and um, we had a, a contract with them that covered all the different areas that would have been needed to uh, deliver a set of plans that would have gone to GDOT for final approval. The same thing applies here. However, as I've mentioned before, we're also on a dual track having discussions with GDOT to see if we can engage them in uh, assisting with the delivery of the project. So if it's the, uh, uh, the, uh, the desire of the committee to uh, and the board uh, to uh, of the committee to make a recommendation to the board uh, to engage Atkins, we would get them started and give them a notice to proceed essentially on the first elements of the project, which is getting the field information, setting it up, getting the traffic counts and the like. And we would not um, clear them to proceed with any other items pending um, again a dual track discussion with GDOT as to whether they would uh, participate and, and hopefully assist in delivery of the project similar to Riverside on the other side at 92. Um, so if, if that is the desire of the committee, then we can, um, we can make a recommendation to the full board to award this um, on call design contract to Atkins uh, for the intersection of Riverside and Thornton Road. So, did you say $28,000 or $288,000? 288000 For the design work. And um, construction is what, about a half million? Construction would be probably about half a million, perhaps a little less than that. Okay. Um, design costs as much as construction. Well, and what, is, what, what will be the source for this, Miguel? Uh, well, this this is uh, a 2016 SPLOST. Uh, it, there is an allocation uh, on the current SPLOST list for this intersection uh, mm -hmm. that would cover uh, this contract and and allow uh, and, and leave some money for the construction. So. If if we if we stay with this budget of two eighty nine thousand two hundred eighty nine thousand and say half a million for construction, then we would be within budget of what is allocated currently in this loss program. 
Madam Chair, what do you think? Yeah, I just, I'm just wondering, and then certainly correct me if I'm thinking wrong. Is it just for that little area that's that worn shoulder or that deep cavity? Is that what you're talking about addressing right at Riverside and, and Thornton Road, uh, Director Valentini? Yes, it is, Madam Chair. And it costs that much to do that? That's a little. <laughs> wow, that's all. What yeah, what it is is when when the, the consultants uh, begin to develop plans, they have to apply the current um, requirements uh, to the intersection in terms of the the radii um, where the curb would go. They have to do exploration to make sure mm -hmm. they're not getting into utilities or impacting utilities and the like. So um, there there is a certain amount of effort that goes into a formal design, which this would be. Um, on the dual track, which is the, the uh, uh, project that, that we did on the other side of Riverside and 92, we were able to have um, a coordination with GDOT and do a quick response. They do not require a full set of plans. And so, in fact, those plans we were able to do in-house here and provided them to, to GDOT, and then they funded the construction. So uh, as long as it stays within $200,000, then that is an avenue that we've explored in the past. Now, they have their own funding limitations, and uh, they, they, uh, we've had discussions with them for a while. They could not commit to this funding until they took it through the formal process at, at GDOT. Uh, and their funding, their new fiscal year started on July 1st. So they are now more engaged in having discussions about the potential of this being a quick response project. And so, uh, but based on the desire of the committee at a prior meeting that, that we get the process moving, I, yes. I obtained this, this price uh, quotation for the design. So, it's up to, to the committee how you want to proceed, but that's what we would be looking at in terms of uh, a design fee. Yeah. Okay, I know, I know it's needed, so I just had questions regarding the, the cost for that small area, but um, again, I, go ahead. I, it would be nice if we had a guarantee that it would, you know, once the issue is resolved, that it won't happen again. I'm just not sure if we have that uh, ability to place that accountability on whoever is going to do the work because those trucks are, you know, they're just continuous and the weight. So this is a permanent solution. Certainly if we could share that with the board, is it permanent? What, what are your thoughts, uh, Director Valentine? So once this happens, that big cavity won't occur again or what happens? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, th this, this would be a permanent solution, but it would be a permanent solution under either scenario. Uh, the, the intent is to move the radii back away from the intersection to okay. facilitate truck movement through the intersections. And once you do that, they would have not a lot of reason to go off the road. In fact, uh, perhaps the, the grading would make it more difficult for them to do that. Right now, because of the approach angle and the radii being tighter than, than um, they would like, and that the design uh, criteria now would, would indicate uh, they are climbing over the curb and, and uh, creating uh, holes and potholes and creating mm -hmm. issues behind it. But uh, they would have little reason to do that once the radii are redesigned and moved back away from the intersection. But okay. either scenario would accomplish that. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm okay, uh, Chairman of the committee. I believe that's, you know, if, you, if you're settled with it, I'm okay. Because we really need to take care of that area. It's, it's a thorn in everybody's side and the truck drivers. And I'm, I'm concerned from a safe, safety perspective that maybe a truck may turn over and then we have a whole nother, it'll be a whole nother conversation. So we want to take care of it on the front end rather than on the back end, as we say in surgery. So I'm, I'm comfortable if you're comfortable, Chairman of the Committee. I'm Chair, I'm not settled. 
you're not good. Okay, there you go. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's pricey, I'm thinking. <laughs> wow. well, not so much as pricey, I mean, two things, Miguel, I thought we were reconstructing, not just dealing with the curb cuts, but reconstructing and making it thicker to Madam Chair's point so it can carry the weight. So that was my first issue that I didn't hear you say. It, and we was not just doing that corner, but the whole intersection. So what shifted? No, uh, that that was n not my understanding that uh, would have been the intent of the project. As I understood it, um, the the intent was uh, to to make the approaches more manageable for trucks so that they would not be encroaching beyond the curb uh, and creating those those holes. Um, certainly, there would be a once you do that, or in the process of doing that, there would be some repaving of those um, turn lanes, if you will, but it would not impact the intersection proper. It would just be construction off to the side of the main thoroughfare, which would be Thornton. It really would impact uh, just the primarily the two corners where the radii are, are tight now uh, and the trucks are encroaching beyond uh, be on the curb line, but uh, it's it hasn't been my understanding that we would be doing the the intersection itself. To do that, it would be a totally different design approach, and uh, this fee would not cover uh, it would not cover that level of that scope. Okay. The second thing that two fifty whatever two eighty eight. That's expensive just for just this, for some reason. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have peace with that number. I'm like, okay, what are they designing for a quarter million dollars? Um, I'm just not settled yet. Let, let's take this one offline. No action, Madam Chair, if you're okay with that and county administrator, I'm, I need to better understand what we're doing here. I know it's important. I know our commercial residents out there are asking for this, but I want to get this right. And I'm just not settled yet. Okay. No. County administrator. I'm with you. I am. That's I'm I'm kind of blown away because that's just design. So I would agree. I think we need to take another look and maybe bring this back at a later meeting with greater clarity. Yeah, it seems like a lot me. just for the design. Yeah, for the design. I'm thinking who <laughs> I mean, what are yeah. they gonna come back and tell us if design is 10%? Are they going to come back and tell us it's a $2 million fix? I, I don't think so. Let's let's take this one. Let's take another look at this one. Good. Yeah. Miguel, you okay with that? Next, bring yeah. it back to this meeting. We'll, we'll talk some more offline. Madam Chair, are you okay with that? We oh, just, yeah, I'm very much okay. I'm just glad that I had an amen corner here. I was just saying, well, I'll move to make everybody happy, but no, thank you. Mm -hmm. That price in this is just a little steep. Thank you. All right. Very good. Okay, Miguel, sure. next item. All right, uh, next item, uh, the agenda is, is a bit confusing, but uh, the consulting services design cost estimate was related to this particular item. Uh, we may need to come back with uh, other projects as we move those forward, but uh, uh, it was intended to be this item. So the next item is the uh, uh, an update on the ARC project solicitation, which is at, at a very appropriate time. Uh, we've we've received word from the Atlanta Regional Commission that they will be opening up another, uh, what they refer to as call for projects, another opportunity for the county to apply for additional federal funding uh, on the projects, mostly on TIP projects. And so they haven't opened it up yet, but they indicated that it's forthcoming. Uh, they wanted us to be aware so that we could be prepared to uh, prioritize the projects. Uh, they did indicate that the funding level that's available is not quite as robust as the, as the last iteration of the call for projects. So it's gonna be more competitive and, and thus is gonna be more important for the county to go in with very clear priorities um, on how we submit the projects. If, uh, you know, if if we are aiming to have one or two projects uh, that are our priority, then submit only those, and and uh, not uh, blanket them with with a lot of them. 
but uh, there is no particular limit. But uh, however many we submit, they, they want to know specifically that we're clear on what the priority is because they're only going to be able to reach down to the least, but so far, and they're going to aim for the top priorities for the county. So um, just an update on that for, for discussion, which I think is fairly timely in that we're looking for any and all possible funding sources to move these projects along. So. Okay. Do we have an updated tip list? Uh, we do. Yes. Um, is that incorporated in our CTP project? It is. Okay. And when will they be finished? Uh, the new C the CTP will be completed by, uh, it'll be before the board sometime in November of this year for, for adoption. But the projects that we uh, would be moving forward with um, are the priority projects that the board has acted on previously on other uh, opportunities for funding. So those are also TIP projects and they are already, they are already in our CTP, the older version of the CTP, but they do qualify for, for this new round as well. When is the deadline for response? Uh, they are going to be opening up the, the, the call for projects. My expectation would be probably sometime in uh, mid-October-ish. And um, they will give us perhaps um, till the end of the year to get the projects in. And they will begin the process of vetting the projects early in 2022. Okay. So we got some time. OK. Good. Good. Thank you. Madam Chair, any, th any comments, Madam Chair? I didn't want to rush through that. I just want to say thank you. Get out the gates so we can try to pick up one or two of them for those projects. Uh, is it matching, any matching or a straight? Uh, the, the expectation is it's going to be match required on all of them. And, and if under the best of circumstances for those projects, it would be 80, 20, so 20% 20 local match. But yeah. Um, you know, depending on, on their funding availability, it, it may end up being something less than that. But um, any funding that we can get uh, would be welcome for sure. Yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We'll go back to you. Chairman. Thank you. County Administrator, any comments? So you're good. We've got personnel that's, that can support this and respond. Yeah, we'll be ready. We'll, we'll do what's necessary. Um, and we got your email about SPLOST and we do have a list that is ready for you to look at. Okay. So under other, um, I'd like to ask that we add that. David Good has been really helpful and instrumental in leading, um, getting this all together uh, with, with Miguel and Fred. So I would ask that you consider adding that to the agenda for today. Oh, absolutely. We'll come to that. Miguel, anything else before we come to miscellaneous? Uh, no, no, sir. All right. If there's no objections, we'll add the reforecast to the list. So Madam, Madam Administrator, um, the floor is yours. Do you have a copy that you can send us or you can put it on your screen? Um, David, do you want to put it on the screen or do you want me to go ahead and and try to. You're muted. And, and welcome, David Good, to the meeting. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you. I'll try to put it on the screen. All right. This is literally hot off the press. Uh, can you see it? No. Not yet. It's coming Not up. Yet. It says double click. There you there go. You go. OK, awesome. <laughs> Okay, so if you look at this um, screen, if you go to the very first setup, it says request to increase funding for original projects. So therefore, we have original projects that came in at a certain amount. So we're looking at the 2022 resurfacing of the projects. That one, we, uh, we're asking for an additional $3 million. When it comes, uh, $3,075,000. When it comes to new man, and this is for the, again the re additional resurfacing for 2022. We already have three million already for 2022. We're asking for an additional three million seventy-five thousand. 
when it comes to New Manchester High School for the additional um, construction. We'll need $750,000 to, to complete what we put in. We put some the original, more design work on there. So therefore, we now for new construction, we need that amount for construction. For the additional for Chapel Hill Road the intersections, that's $2,350,000. That's going to be for, we did original um, additional design work in order to uh, lengthen that stretch and we'll need that for construction. And then for Maxim Road from the GDOT project limit to the county line with Cobb, uh, we'll need an additional 350,000. For this section, that's 6,525,000. And now when we go over to, to the next section, this is the order of projects for those projects that are either above the line, right below the line or additional. So we have the five, Highway 5 concourse properly. We know that's the city of Douglasville. So I know at the uh, retreat, the million dollars was talked about, but that is one piece. The Thornton Road at Riverside, um, that's 895,000 to correct that, uh, that intersection. Next is the very first below the uh, first project that went below the line. It was an original Highway 78 at John West and at South Baker Road, that's $2 million. Next up is all the additional projects. That's poster, and these are, and everything is in order based upon everything that the Board of Commissioners said that they needed. So this is what was on the list and below the line as additional projects. Post Road at I-20 and westbound ramps, that was an additional project. Bright Star Road from Calvin Road to Douglas Boulevard, that's a sidewalk project. Highway 166 at Post Road, Highway 166 at Chapel Hill Road were also additional projects. We had Highway 5 at Berea Road. There was no funding, but it was something that said, you know, put on the list. And then the last one was a GDI grant off uh, for off system safety. So that's a safety project. All those projects come to um, 8,250,000. The last is um, Lana Sudaban asked, asked me to separate the two out between uh, TIP projects and staff recommendations. On the staff recommendation side, um, there's millings, uh, resurfacing for gravel roads, um, District 3 trails, and the SR92 at Lake Monroe, um, and, and, and Lake Monroe uh, Drive, you know, where the intersection is. Um, the millings is that in all three of those projects are at 250000 to make a total of $750,000 for those. And then if you go to the TIP uh, projects, and uh, Miguel would be able to give you more information than I could. But it's a South Douglas Loop and Lee Road extension of $2 million. The Lee Road widening phase one for phase one, um, going, you know, going towards 78, that's $907,370. And then the Chapel Hill at 120 at I-20 interchange at $1.4 million. That makes a total for the request to fund the TIP projects at $4 million, $307,370. And then that makes a full need, including TIP, of $19,832,370. And the full need um, that's in SPLOS is right under that at $15,525,000. And with that, um, I'll take any questions. I'll turn it back over to Madam Sudan. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman of the Committee. Thank you, David. So I know this is a lot to digest, but what we did is to be sure to put all of the below the line projects based on what you had originally talked about um, prior to, I guess it was in 2019. Um, we included the TIP projects on here because if I understand it correctly from Miguel, to go to the next step on these three, which is our, you know, three of our um, high priority projects, we need funding for for PE, and then um, based on other feedback from commissioners, we added new um, staff recommended projects. So our best case scenario was an additional ten million dollars in the transportation section of our SPLOST. And as you heard from David, this is 19 million. And so where we would like to go is through this committee to get some direction on 
what you think we should make our priorities and how to cull, you know, about 50% of this, um, maybe even just the order that you want to go in, but we need some guidance um, on, on the project side. And if I, if I may offer, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No, no, you finished, Madam Minister? I um, am, okay. I am, Vice Chair. Okay, go ahead, Miguel. Yeah, I was gonna try and offer some clarity on the, on the TIP projects. Uh, as uh, Madam Subadan mentioned, the, the amounts requested shown on this spreadsheet are only to take the projects to the next phase. Uh, the Lee Road extension has just gone through a feasibility study and we're ready to go to engineering design. Lee Road phase one, where we just approved, the board just approved the contract with GDOT to take that to um, design also. And the Chapel Hill I-20, we, we completed a scoping phase and are ready to go to the next um, step, which is design. So these amounts here are intended to move those three projects to the next step. Uh, the Lee Road widening phase one, the amount budgeted in the uh, agreement with GDOT is severely outdated. And when we do the RFQ, which we're ready to, getting ready to do that, the expectation is that we will need additional funding uh, to be able to complete that phase of the project. So that's what, what these uh, entries represent here. They do not include any right-of-way acquisition. They do not include any construction for those projects. It's just to get them into the design phase and be able to complete that next phase. And to be clear, Miguel, just so that it's not confusing, this Lee Road widening is not the part that's been recently awarded, right? Correct. Uh, this would be the, the phase one, which goes to uh, 78 to Veterans Memorial. Yeah, for Henry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, duly noted, this was a lot. I've been waiting on this. So, I'm going to have to pause on it before I could take any action. But, but what about um, things that we have talked about, like, um, I guess the um, the library in District Three that needs some um, right away work, um, some intersection work. Um, Miguel, we talked about that. Um, is that on the list, or did I miss it? That is not on this list, uh, Chairman of the Committee. That that uh, it is a more recent discussion that has not made it to to this level of of the reforecasting process. It, it is not included. In fact, uh, the, the trails uh, discussion that started a few months ago, uh, we're uh, on this list, we're only including the initial design uh, for, for the system, not anything beyond that. So um, the library has not been included on here. The only reason I brought it up because we just um, adopted the strategic plan and to a certain extent that reshapes this list to a certain extent um, because the, the commissioners um, came out with their own set of priorities. So um, I would encourage us to put that, at least put it on the list. Um, don't invalidate it. I, I think that's important um, because again, we've now set some strategic priorities, right? So that, that shapes some of the things that we were thinking, what, five years ago? To a certain extent. And so um, I think there's a reprioritization that has to happen. Madam Chair, um, if, if you don't disagree or maybe you agree, I think that needs to be added to the list just to be acknowledged. Certainly we can add, uh, I, um, I don't have any objection, but I believe there was another pathway that we were looking yeah. at perhaps through the opera. If you could just chime in, if you would allow the county administrator to share what our thought process was. County administrator, can you chime in? Sure. Um, so. Vice Chair, there is a similar looking list to this for parks. 
um, which the Parks and Recreation Committee didn't take it up this morning, but we do have a similar list like this ready. Um, it does identify the, um, the library on there um, as a below the line project for the full amount. For the infrastructure, um, in my talks with, with various commissioners, I have a list for the ARPA funding and the infrastructure for the library, Chapel Hill Library is one of the priorities on that list. So I'll be compiling that and by the end of the week, I'll have a full compilation of that list for you all to consider. So, you know, it's fine if you want us to put it on the transportation piece, but I did want you to know that it's appearing on two other lists. Now, duly noted, but this, back to my original point, a single view of everything, right? So my, I'm, I'm so, um, my statements are a little off because I, I didn't know, I didn't see it, right? All I'm managing is, all I'm doing is managing this, but we need a single list of everything, right? So, so we can balance our, our comments um, so we can line things up. So when do we think that we're gonna get an alignment of everything? Well, we've provided that twice. We provided a single view at the retreat and we've provided a single view to you again. Um, now that said, some of the priorities have shifted and so we're going to have to update that. Um, but before, what I'd like to do is get the ARPA list combined for you all to review rather than throwing together another single view that is not consistent with your direction. Because if you remember, the single view we did was staff recommendation. Now we're looking for the board to give us guidance. So our next version of the single view will be We'll have your fingerprints on it. Understood. Understood. Point well taken. I'm fine for right now. Madam Chair, are you okay with this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, I guess no action in this meeting. We need we need a chance to sort of take a look at this. Sure. Me and Madam Chair. So Madam Chair, there's no action. I'm not suggesting we recommend it to the full board as a reforecast recommendation because we need to chew on this ourselves. If you're okay with that, at least I do. Yeah, I believe um, the county administrator mentioned prioritization uh, for this this list to be prioritized, and that would come from the board, um, Absolutely. particularly. And then also, is some low hanging fruit on on the list that I'm not sure how this committee feels about those quick wins that have give us an opportunity to show some demonstration. But I know what happens when your quick wins; it can chew down the the proceeds quickly if you get those quick quick wins, and it certainly could uh, uh, skew the uh, priority list. So what are your thoughts, uh, Chairman of the committee? It's, it's, uh, I looked at one one side of your list of which the gravel and all that, millions, that's, to me, that's quick. And then we had something for District 3 that was on there. And I believe it was a total of, could you go, David, could you go back if you could to your spreadsheet? I saw it on the right hand side of your spreadsheet. Or maybe if you could tell me. It was millions and it was something else. The trails, there was a district. The trails. And that was that, what was the price tag? Was it seven fifty? It was two fifty. Yeah, two fifty. Yeah, if you recall, yeah. Commissioner Carthen, I think, appeared at this meeting and asked about some funding for trails. Yeah, district three trails. Mm -hmm. Yes, two fifty. And then you had some millions for your resurface for gravel roads, two fifty. And then what is the state route 92 at Lake Monroe Road? Uh, two, 250,000, what is that? Is that uh, intersection or what is it? On the new projects. Um, that, that's, uh, that's a T. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Miguel, go ahead. I was gonna say that that uh, it's, it's to uh, potentially investigate uh, the need or the ability to install a traffic signal oh, okay. at that yes. intersection. But, but the funding here is just for the initial phase of the analysis of some preliminary design. Oh, okay. Thank you for clarifying. So, yeah. that's 750,000, it's quick, but Chairman of the committee, I don't know what your thoughts are. Yeah, I mean, I had no problem with, with quick wins per se, but I, I still wanna have a chance to take a look at how we spend $19 million and I've only looked at this for 19 minutes. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but but duly noted, um, again, we've been waiting on this, right? 
we've been waiting on this. And so the need was always there, right? We finally got a list now. I think we should be given an opportunity just to sort of look at it. Um, by the time we come to our next committee meeting next month, we should be able to sort of move forward. Uh, unless there was something that was pressing, something that was perishable, something that was safety, um, we probably could move on. But uh, for the most part, um, I don't have any objections with the quick wins. It's just a matter of let us have a chance to take a look at this. Sure. Yeah. Madam Minister, did you say something? Yes, we just wanted to get this out in front of you. Right. Um, make sure that we were on the right track. I think we've covered all the bases with the below the line, the TIP projects, projects that were originally budgeted that we think need additional funding. Additional. Right. Because we want to make sure we can finish these projects. <clears throat> um, and if, if you're good with this format, this color coded, we'll make print copies for you. Um, in fact, Vice Chair, um, we can get that to you today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'll also email it. Sounds good. Thank you for all the work, though. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I've been waiting on this. So it's like, okay, now I got to pause on this. So no, don't get me wrong. I'm not hesitant. I just I'm, I want to get deeper into it. So that's all. Madam Chair, are you okay? I'm okay. Progress with this. Um, okay. So the other committees are also doing the same thing. Yes, we actually. Yes. yes, yes, sir. We um talked about it at the um parks committee today. Um, but we didn't actually get to show the list. So um, we'll be doing that at that at the chairman's um convenience. Gotcha. Okay. Got it. All right. Anything else, Miguel? No, sir. I think we've covered all of the agenda items. Okay. Madam Chair, any comments? No comments. It's a very good meeting. Okay. Madam Administrator? No, thank you for the opportunity to share the information. Um, as you can see, Fred and Tiffany are on this meeting. Mm -hmm. um, Fred, because of the emphasis on SPLOST, and Tiffany, because of the emphasis on um, Connect Douglas. So. Got it. Sorry, I didn't acknowledge you, um, Assistant Deputy Director. Tiffany, sorry about that. So Fred, thank you for being okay. here. David, thank you also for being here. Madam Chair, if there's nothing else that needs to come before this committee. No? That would be good. I call, yeah. I call this meeting adjourned. Thank all you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.